The classroom buzzed with the usual morning chatter, students half listening to their teacher as they exchanged whispers and notes under their desks. But the moment the teacher's fist slammed against the desk, the room fell into an eerie silence. The sharp bang echoed, reverberating through the walls, and everyone's head snapped forward, eyes wide and breaths caught. The only sound that followed was the angry growl of Mr. Hudson's voice, slicing through the tense air. His words were laced with impatience and a simmering rage that felt all too familiar to Maddie. Take it off, now, Mr. Hudson barked, his tone carrying an unspoken threat. His jaw was clenched so tightly that the veins in his neck bulged, and his nostrils flared as he pointed directly at Maddie. Maddie's heart lurched, pounding wildly in her chest, the sound of it deafening in her ears. Her fingers instinctively gripped the brim of her baseball cap, holding onto it as if her very life depended on it. In that moment, it felt like it did. She could feel the teacher's eyes burning into her, the intensity of his gaze pressing down on her like a physical weight. The classroom suddenly felt suffocating, the walls closing in around her. Her vision blurred slightly, not from tears, but from the overwhelming rush of fear that coursed through her veins. She knew he wasn't bluffing, and she knew that this confrontation wasn't going to end well. But even as her body trembled, rooted to her chair, she couldn't bring herself to comply with his command. Not today. Today of all days, she couldn't do it. Mr. Hudson began to move towards her, each heavy step sending a ripple of dread through her body. His towering frame cast a long shadow over her desk as he approached, and she could feel every eye in the room fixated on her. The pressure was unbearable. Maddie, I said, take the hat off. His voice boomed through the room, growing louder and more forceful with each word, like a storm rolling in, ready to break. Maddie swallowed hard, her throat dry, her hands shaking. Her mind raced, trying to find the words that would make him understand, to plead with him, but nothing came out. Her lips moved, but her voice had abandoned her leaving only the frantic beating of her heart in the silence. She wanted to tell him. She wanted to explain everything. About her illness, about the countless nights spent in hospitals, about the medicine that made her feel worse than the sickness itself, about the pain that was her constant companion, gnawing at her bones. But no words formed. Fear had taken control. The teacher loomed over her, his patience gone. His hands shot forward, fingers gripping the brim of her cap. And before she could even register what was happening, he yanked it off her head. The motion was swift and brutal, and it felt like the air had been sucked out of the room. For a moment, there was nothing, no sound, no movement, just silence. The entire class froze, eyes wide with a mix of shock and curiosity. Then the whispers started, soft at first, but quickly growing louder. Gasps echoed through the room, and Maddie's worst nightmare unfolded before her. She felt exposed, vulnerable, as if every piece of armor she had was stripped away, leaving her raw and defenseless in front of her peers. Her hands shot up to her head, instinctively trying to cover the patches of bare skin where her hair had once been. But it was too late. The damage had been done. The stares, the whispers, the cruel snickers. It all flooded her senses, drowning her in a wave of humiliation so deep that she could barely breathe. Tears welled in her eyes, blurring her vision as she fought to hold them back. She could feel the heat rising in her face, the flush of embarrassment mixing with the cold, sharp sting of betrayal. The cap had been her shield, the last thing protecting her from the harsh reality of her illness. Now, stripped of it, she felt naked, as if the very essence of her being had been laid bare for everyone to see and judge. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. This semester was supposed to be different. After everything she had been through, the treatments, the surgeries, the endless medications, Maddie had hoped this year would be a fresh start. The doctors had said the worst was over, that the pain would ease, and that her hair would eventually grow back. She had dared to believe them. She had dared to hope. And for a while, it seemed like things were looking up. She had returned to school, nervous but excited, eager to be normal again, to blend in, to forget about the hospital beds and IV drips. But she had been wrong, so very wrong. The world wasn't kind. And now sitting here, with her classmates' eyes burning into her, 
Maddie felt the full weight of that cruel truth. The laughter around her grew louder, and the whispers became more pointed. She could feel their pity, their mockery, their cruel delight in her pain. The words of her classmates cut deeper than any knife ever could. And then, in her mind, a memory surfaced. A moment from two years ago that seemed like a lifetime away now. It had been at a friend's birthday party, back before the illness had taken everything from her. Maddie had been wearing her baseball cap that day, not out of necessity, but just because she liked it. She had been standing by the cake table when a little girl, no older than six, had come up to her, eyes wide with admiration. I like your baseball cap, the little girl had said, her voice filled with innocent delight. Maddie had been caught off guard by the compliment, but she had smiled, really smiled, for the first time in what felt like forever. Thank you, she had replied softly, her heart warming at the simple kindness. For a few brief minutes, they had talked, and Maddie had felt normal. The girl hadn't cared about her appearance, hadn't seen her as the sick girl, the one everyone pitied. She had just seen Maddie. It was a small moment, but it had meant the world to her. Now that memory felt distant, like a dream she could barely hold on to. The laughter around her pulled her back to reality, and the overwhelming sense of isolation hit her like a tidal wave. She was alone in this battle. No one here understood what she was going through, the pain she carried every day, the fear that gripped her heart every morning when she looked in the mirror and saw less and less of the girl she used to be. The room began to spin. Maddie could feel her breath quicken, her chest tightening as panic set in. The world around her grew blurry, the voices of her classmates fading into a distant hum. Her head swam and she tried to steady herself, but it was no use. The overwhelming stress, the humiliation, the pain, it all became too much. She felt her body give way, and then everything went black. When Maddie came to, she was in a sterile white hospital room, the beeping of monitors echoing faintly in the background. Her head throbbed, and her body ached in ways she hadn't thought possible. As her eyes adjusted to the harsh lighting, she saw her mother sitting beside her, worry etched deeply into her face. Her father, a tall, imposing figure, stood by the door, his arms crossed over his chest. Maddie's heart sank. She had never seen him look so angry, and for a moment, she wondered if his anger was directed at her. Had she done something wrong? Was he disappointed in her? But as their eyes met, her father's expression softened. He moved toward her, his large, rough hands surprisingly gentle as he took her hand in his. There was a sadness in his eyes, a deep sorrow that made Maddie's chest tighten with emotion. Without a word, he turned and stormed out of the room, the door closing behind him with a soft thud. Maddie's mother gave her a reassuring smile, but it was thin, fragile, as if she were holding back tears. Maddie's throat tightened. Her father, Eric Dunham, wasn't just any man. He was a Navy SEAL, a man trained for battle, for war, for surviving the worst the world could throw at him. But nothing had prepared him for this, for watching his daughter suffer, for seeing the toll this illness had taken on her. He had always been Maddie's rock, her protector, and now he was furious, furious at the teacher who had humiliated her, at the school that had allowed it to happen, at the world that had been so cruel to his little girl. Maddie watched as her father left the room, his anger barely contained. She knew where he was going. He was going to confront Mr. Hudson, to demand answers, to make sure that the man who had caused his daughter so much pain would pay for what he had done. What followed in the days after would shake the school to its core.